I don't think we make minds. I don't, I don't think we create consciousness. I don't think we do it when we make an embryo. I don't think we do it when we make uh, an AI or an embedded uh, robotic system. I think we f facilitate the ingression of certain patterns from that platonic space. And this is, this is where we get to a completely, you know, sort of different theory of consciousness. I've heard you talk on podcasts that you're working on your own theory of consciousness. I know we're not going to get to all of it, but can I, um, can I convince you to drop a few, drop a few little hints or a few little tidbits of what what your theory of consciousness really involves? Um, well, I'll, I, I can okay, okay. I can I can talk about um, what 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 we are doing that that bears on it. It's not the the actual theory isn't isn't nearly ready yet to to, to say anything strong. But uh, but but here's 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 one thing I can say. Um, you know, uh, both both uh, you know Anil and Peter and and a lot of folks in the field, uh, some of the most radical ones extend sort of down into you know insects and things like this and then and then there's a community in diverse in the diverse intelligence field there's a community that will go to plants and single cells you know frantishek baluska and you know pamela line and so on will go to bacteria and and single cell and and um and, and plants there's a there's a, a great community working on plant intelligence and all that um i i am sort of way more radical than this because I, I don't actually think there's anything. You, if, you, if you if you want that spectrum to stop somewhere, you have to specify what the secret sauce is. What what yeah. what is what is the special thing? And I don't think it's the material. I don't think there's anything special about being protonaceous. I don't think that it's the origin story. I don't think there's any magic in having derived from a random um, meanderings of, of, of mutation and selection. I don't think that's necessary for making minds. I, I think it's much more basic than that. And I, I, I catch flack from, um, from that community too by uh, putting certain, put, by, by putting what they call machines on that same spectrum. So it's, it's, it's really quite, quite disturbing. So, so my, my framework is, is disturbing on both ends. The um, sort of mechanist, uh, molecular biology folks say, well, this is, this is, this is really bad. You're bringing some sort of uh, cognition into molecular, uh, events, things that, uh, should be the province of chemistry. And I say, but, but we've shown Pavlovian conditioning in molecular networks. Like it, it's the same, you know, it's the same stuff. But anyway, but, but they want to keep it to, to, to chemistry. And then on the other end, you have people who, in the organicist tradition who have said, look, we, we've for hundreds of years, we've we've fought against the mechanization of life, the, the, re, the reduction of life to simple machines. And now you're putting you're putting these machines on the same spectrum as, you, you know, you're going to devalue uh, basically the whole, you know, the whole uh, majesty of 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 of, of uh, living living minds. Um, I, I think it's all a spectrum and, and, it, and they're on the same spectrum. And, and here's here's why. Uh, what I found, what, what I found is that in very simple systems, and I'll, I'll tell you briefly what, what they are, but very simple systems that are in no way alive, that are not evolved, that are not, uh, that, that are actually deterministic. Um, you already get the kind of surprised, uh, surprising behaviors. And in fact, co um, uh, some behaviors you would recognize as, as cognitive capa um, uh, capacities. You already get that. And, um, what I what I claim is that for the exact same reasons that the laws of chemistry don't tell the whole story of, a, let's say, a human mind, the laws of uh, computer science, meaning algorithms, the description of algorithms and the materials don't actually tell the whole story of even very simple machines. This this magic that we're talking about, this ability to uh, have have goals and cognitive uh, properties that are not prescribed by the physics of your organism, nor by the materials. Um, but seem to be something more than that. I, I, th that's real. I, I, I think that's absolutely real. But it's not limited to living things. It emerges extremely early in the in the kind of ladder of complexity. You don't need to be complex. And 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 to kind of nail this down in the most um, disruptive way possible, I took the most uh, kind of um, the simplest thing I could I could think of, which is which is sorting algorithms. So like bubble sort. You know, like these are these are very simple algorithms. Six lines of code, um, completely deterministic. People have, they, they just, they're, they're designed to sort uh, arrays of numbers from a, from a jumbled up mess into a sequence of numbers. And so this is, this is the work of, um, Taining Zhang and Adam Goldstein, two of my students. What, what we basically did, the, these algorithms have been studied by generations of computer science students. Everybody studies them for, I don't know, 60 years or more. 
And uh, nobody noticed the following thing, that if you look at them in a, in a particular way, if you actually treat them as, as potential agents, which doesn't look like they are because it's just, you know, just, just six lines of deterministic code, uh, how much agency could it have? If you actually are willing to suspend your um, armchair beliefs about it and actually do experiments and actually see, well, what is this thing capable of? What you find out is that that same algorithm, that exact same algorithm, yeah, it sorts numbers, all right. But at the same time, it does some other stuff that is nowhere in the algorithm. And it has these little side quests, these weird, weird little side quests that it does while it's doing that. And I think it's an extremely minimal model of what we see in life, which is, yeah, you're subject to the laws of physics and chemistry, and you can't do anything that is disallowed in the laws of physics and chemistry. And yet you will do things that, while not, not prohibited by those laws, are neither prescribed by them. And that degree of people call it emergence, and I don't like that word at all. And so I have a whole other, uh, a whole other um, uh, framework for thinking about them. That's that's very uh, Platonist, uh, kind of like uh, you know Platonist mathematics and so on. We can we can talk about that 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 separately. Which is then this is going to get to the theory of consciousness because I, I don't think we make minds. I don't I don't think we create consciousness. I don't think we do it when we make an embryo. I don't think we do it when we make uh, an AI or an embedded robotic system. I think we facilitate the ingression of certain patterns from that platonic space. And this is, this is where we get to a completely, you know, sort of different theory of consciousness because, and, 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 and the reason I can talk about this now where I couldn't before is precisely because of the xenobots and the anthrobots. It's because typically when you have, uh, in biology, when you have any kind of an animal or a plant, you say, well, what explains the shape and the behavior that it has? The standard answer is evolution, a history of selection. It was, it was selected to be this or that. Well, Anthrobots, there's never been any anthrobots. There's never been selection to be a good xenobot. Where did their shape and behaviors come from? And that leads to a deep question of where do mathematical truths come from? Where do forms come from? Things that are not dependent on the physical world that you could change every, anything you wanted in the physical universe. You could not change the value of E or the, the shape of certain, you know, fractal structures or whatever. There's nothing you can do in the physical world to change that. So that, that, that eventually that, that gives you the flavor of, of what's going on. But, but, but the idea is that. That 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 magic that we associate with with cognition, with 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 freedom, with open endedness, it doesn't take life. It doesn't take cells. It doesn't take minds, or, or it doesn't take um, uh, brains or neurons or anything like that. It is baked into the to the most uh, kind of uh, uh, s simple elements of the of the universe. That is radical. I cannot wait until you have that fully packed into a into a book or a paper or something. I can't wait. It if I could leave with one final question, Mike, this has been, it's been so much fun. I think I could talk to you for a thousand hours and still not even be remotely bored. You're an incredible scientific speaker and just mind, and it's a privilege to be able to talk to you. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Is there any part of the scientific work that you've done that you're scared of? That you're, in the back of your mind, you're kind of fearful of where it could evolve, where it could go to, or what it might look like in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? Um, yeah, uh, there are two, two things. The thing that, that I'm scared of all, all the time is the failure to live up to the potential of regenerative medicine. So it's, it's not, I, I, I think when people, people always ask about, you know, ethical implications, I, I, I think they're typically thinking about it in this way. Everything is cool. Everything's good now. And you scientists better not screw it up. So what are you afraid of that's going to happen? I, I go in the opposite direction. I say, look, look around. Th things are absolutely not cool. I get, I get email. I'm not even a clinician. I get emails every day from people in the most incredible medical suffering. The environment is, is, a, is a mess. All of these things, uh, inaction and the inability to learn what we need to learn to elevate and, and enable people to have the embodiment that they want, right? Is, is I think a huge, would be a huge moral lapse. I think we have an ethical responsibility to get these things to the point where everybody can have the embodiment that they want and are not subject to the whims of cosmic rays that, you know, hit their, their embryonic cells when they were, when they were an embryo. Um, and so, so that's the first thing. So the fear of, uh, the fear of not living up to, to that, I think is, is absolutely real. And, and the other thing is, uh, there's some, there's some issues, not particularly of my work, but, but, um, the ability to recognize other minds that are not like ours means that we have to radically redo our ethics. And, and that, I mean, that's not just me. That's not my work in particular. It's the fact that when you make tools to see that, my God, there, there are, there are other intelligences that we could, we never recognized before. That's a, that's a major, um, that's a major responsibility. And that's, that's, that's scary. 
giant news. We created a completely free ebook titled 26 Neuroscience Books for 2026. I read over 100 neuroscience books in my life and with Christmas just around the corner, I thought I would help people find the perfect book for them or to buy for someone in their life. It includes really nice science-based illustrations, an accessibility guide, and personally written segments for each book and the impression they left on me. I also asked 100 top scientists like Dr. Mike Levin, Anul Seth, Nick Lane, and many Many, many more what their favorite science book is and you can find all of those included at the end. If you want to support the channel you can also purchase a beautiful physical paperback copy also a perfect stocking filler. We put a lot of effort into our first giant shoulder product and we cannot wait to hear your thoughts. Check it out in the link below again it's completely free.